Hello Photobiller Raphael the bar here. In November we'll be able to photograph the supermoon, the Leonids meteor shower, the Milky Way, Uranus is at its closest approach to Earth and its visible face is completely illuminated. Three conjunctions of the Moon with Jupiter, Mars and Saturn. And finally the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. We're in period of solar maximum still and the Auroras are very active. In November we have a group of photo pillars chasing the Aurora and Orion in the Canadian Rockies. Plan and pray. Also, as always, at the end of the video I'm going to share with you three of the best photos that you submitted to the Photobiller Awards and that be featured in October. On October 5th we'll enjoy the first supermoon of the year, giving us one more chance to photograph it aligned with the interesting subject we like. So based on the moonrise and moon's head direction plan your shot, as I've done here as always, because Yvonne November 5th, 2025 at 5.29 pm. I am at the Rempi position here in, in Menorca. I'll be able to see and photograph the supermoon aligned with the top of the Fabaric lighthouse, which is pretty cool. The moon size, you have it in brackets on the top panel, will be 11 meters and the shooting distance is 1.1 kilometers. And the moon height will be 28 meters. The center of the moon will be at 28 meters, which is the height of the lighthouse. Pretty cool. And if I go to panel number three, the sun elevation is 0.79 at the time of the shooting. This means that the sun is setting and it's golden hour. So I expect the moon to have a nice yellow color. And that's a super cool shot. Like this shot that you see now, shot by Antonio Cladera, but with a bit more of ambient light. Great! If you wish to learn how to plan your moonshots, your super moonshots, watch this video. The Leonids Meteor Shower is peaking on the night that goes from November 16th to the 17th, or from the 17th to the 18th, depending on where you are on Earth. Use photo pills to figure it out. And uh, around 10 a meteors per hour are expected at the peak. The good news is that this year the moon will have a phase of only 4%, meaning that the moon will be under the horizon at night, so we don't have to worry about the moon. The radiant of the Linear's meteor shower, the radiant point, that, that's the spot in the sky where meteors appear to originate, will be due east. And as you see, it is represented by this gray line that's moving when it changes the time here on the Philippines map. And in my plan, you see that the radiant goes over the Favaric lighthouse. Pretty cool. Also, you can tap on the night AR button here and visualize the radiant of the meteor shower in the sky. So you just need to look for the radiant here. You have the Leonids meteor uh, radiant and you can swipe your finger on the screen to see how the radiant moves across the sky so you know where it is at all time. So cool! And oh, by the way, the Leonids meteor shower is active on both hemispheres, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. And if you wish to learn how to plan your meteor shower shots, the Leonids meteor shower shot step by step, watch the video. The new moon is on November 20th and November opens the season of the winter Milky Way in the Northern Hemisphere and the summer Milky Way in the Southern Hemisphere. For example, in the Northern Hemisphere I have the red pin in Menorca in Punta Nati Lighthouse. So you see that you can photograph the thin part of the Milky Way almost vertical and also a nice panorama of the theme of the Milky Way, which is pretty cool. If I tap on the night ER, we can visualize the position of the thin Milky Way in the sky. Where are you? This is the Polaris. Here we have the horizon and we have here. And here we have the thin Milky Way arching above the sky. Pretty cool. Let's go to the southern hemisphere now. Okay, we are in Spiscope, Namibia. And as you see, here in the southern hemisphere, you can get the Milky Way when it's pre-horizontal, for example, for a nice panorama above this amazing mountain range and then you can get it completely vertical which is pretty amazing once again tap on the night AR to visualize the position of the milky way in the sky it's the thin part of the milky way when it's completely vertical and when it gets more uh, when it's with when it's arching i'm sorry and this is uh, when it's completely vertical and as you see the galactic center is under the horizon in november the galactic center it is not visible unfortunately and if you still learn how to plan your Milky Way shots step by step, watch this video. 
on November 21st, Uranus will be at opposition, meaning that it is its closest approach to Earth, and that its visible face it is completely illuminated by the Sun at a magnitude of 5.6. The planet is brighter than any other time of the year, and visible throughout the night. This is the best time to observe Uranus with a telescope. Right after sunset, you'll see Uranus rising in the east. This is on the uh, right-hand side of the map. You can miss it. In November, there will be three Moon-Planet conjunctions. On November 10th, Jupiter will be in conjunction with the Moon, and the Moon phase will be 70%. On November 21st, Mars will be in conjunction with the Moon, and the Moon will be very thin, only 2% of phase. And on November 29th, uh, Saturn will be in conjunction with the Moon, and the Moon phase will be 66%. On both hemispheres, you'll find the Moon-Planet conjunctions where the Moon is. And you know that the position of the Moon is represented by this thin blue line that that's moving on the map, when I change time, where you see the moon, there you'll have the planets too. The sun is in period of solar maximum. This means that we will be more likely to see and photograph the aurora borealis and the aurora australis. So if you're lucky enough to live in the north, for example in Sweden, in Finland, in Iceland, Greenland, the Canadian Rockies, Canada, November it is a great month to view and photograph the aurora. And it will be continue to be like that till April. When should you photograph the aurora? Well, you can photograph it when the aurora is active, the, the sky is clear, and in any moon phase, actually. But usually results are best around near moon. Or when the moon has a little phase and is not really illuminated that much the sky, but it helps you get detail in the foreground. If you still have to plan, photograph the aurora borealis, I invite you to watch this super masterclass by Rachel John Ross. Watch it! And now let's see some of the best photos that you submitted to the Photos Awards and that we featured in October. The first one is a fantastic photo of the Milky Way and the ISS space station in the Netherlands, photo by Stefan Luck. The second one is a cool photo of a crescent moon resting on the pencil at Jones Beach in New York area, USA, photo taken by Fred Fresco. And the third one is a spectacular shot of a silhouette of an elk at sunrise in Point Reyes National Seashore, USA, photo taken by Kevin. Amazing photos, thanks for sharing. And now if you wish to learn how to plan and photograph each one of the events I've shared in this video, I invite you to download and study well our super detailed astronomical event photography guide. I'm going to leave a link to the guide in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Download it. And as always, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember, that you have the power to imagine, plan and shoot legendary photos by Photopillars.